Hey guys, this is Scott and Ariane from This Nomadic Idea, where all of our videos are all about a nomadic lifestyle. Whether it's traveling in an RV or backpacking across the country, please hit that subscribe button and join our community. Today, it's all about plumbing the Airstream Argosy. How to do it, what's the best piping to get, and what product can save you a lot of time if you're not an experienced plumber. So I'm gonna show you all my connections and then I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of what I've done in our bathroom and it's pretty cool. The 1976 Airstream Argosy, um, it hasn't been easy to work on. So we've taken each segment kind of like in priority, like electrical, plumbing, and um, it comes to find out that when you're planning all that, weight is everything. Weight is everything in an RV. How much can you tow? How much can the RV carry? How much are the axles? Um, how much can they carry? What's your tongue weight? What's your tow vehicle weight? Everything is about weight, 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 weight. Which is funny because, you know, when you really think about it, the RV world and the backpacking world isn't all that different. So the plumbing part of it is always where to get water. How much water are you gonna bring? How much water can you carry? How much water can the Airstream hold? We have a 35 gallon fresh water tank in the Airstream. And I had to fix it, it was cracked. And so do you buy a new one? Well, we could have, that's $500 to buy a new fresh water tank. So after doing some research, I fixed it and it doesn't leak, I've tested it, I've tested it, I've tested it. But it, it's so funny because it's like, you know, our biggest issue when we are on the road is water. Um, whether you're gonna go boondocking, whether you're gonna be in an RV park, it's always water, water, water. So the Airstream Argosy and all of the old vintage Airstreams, the plumbing was kind of weird. The plumbing came in from the back and went up through the floor in the back of the bumper. So this, <laughs> this was cool, but it also created a lot of problems. That's the thing with these vintage Airstream uh, camper trailers, specifically the Argosy is that I mean, they're beautiful, but when you go to restore these things, it's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take a lot of effort, and it's going to take a lot of patience. And so with the plumbing, I found that we wanted to be as, um, we wanted it to be very convenient, very easy, and we didn't want to have to reinvent the wheel. However, there was, um, there was some old plumbing issues that we just had to gut, we had to take out, and we couldn't keep in the Airstream. So basically, it's all brand new plumbing. This is the SureFlow Inlet Water Regulator. The nice thing about, I like about this is that it has a chuck valve built inside, a brass chuck valve, and it regulates water pressure. So when you put your hose in here, and I'll have another mount in here where I can plug in my fresh water when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm at an RV park or campground and they provide water, is that this will regulate it no more than 50 PSI. So it really helps uh, with water pressure inside your Airstream. And uh, it's really relatively a uh, um, good price. It runs about uh, 70 bucks. You can find it 40 to $70 depending on where it is. But this is the SureFlow. Make sure it's a SureFlow. This is where the freshwater tank goes put a hose in there it's got an air air intake out and you just fill your fresh water tank right in there one of the common problems with the old Argosy fresh water tanks that sat in the front like this is that they moved back and forth and so when you went up bumps when you went forward went backward every once in a while the tank would move back and forth and it would fluctuate. So a lot of your tanks are cracked right in here, right at the mouth. Well, one of the problems was because this tube was so rigid, there wasn't enough play in the tube itself, and so the tube 
would move the nozzle up and down, up and down, up and down, and eventually would would crack. One of the things that I did was I just got a regular bicycle inner tube and am going to put it over here and clamp it. And then with this tube right here, it's pretty, pretty flexible also. That will solve the problem of a hard plastic tube um, putting pressure on this. Now, the cool thing about this is that Incaplastics.com still makes these. They are still in business and they have a whole section on how to repair these tanks. It takes time, it takes a little effort, but I repaired mine and mine doesn't leak at all. One of the things I did with my design in my Airstream was that I actually put in my own check valve. And this connection right here goes from the water inlet outdoors so when I'm at an RV park and I'm plugged into shore water this then goes back to my 35 gallon fresh water tank I do have the sure flow water pump the 12 volt water pump which is going to pump water this way but when I'm at an RV park and I don't and I'm not using my 12 volt water pump I'm going to turn it on turn it off and the water stops right here I don't need any water going this way into my fresh water tank now the reason I did that was because so many people had said that the sure flow water pump although it's quiet it's great but that back valve actually does go bad after a while and so why risk a flood in the airstream by all this water going and backfilling into your fresh water tank so I put this in here it's off when we're at an RV park or we're gonna have um, shore water uh, at, at a, a water inlet and when I'm using my 12 volt pump to boondock I just turn that on and now I have fresh water and the thing with the plumbing is that you can't get this wrong if it leaks it's not like a, a water leak in your house. It could be catastrophic, but in an RV, you cannot have any water leaks whatsoever. You'll get, you know, floor rot um, and damage other other things. And you don't have to take apart the whole uh, custom bill that you did to fix a water leak. So, so in today's world, you're really replacing all of this with this. This is shark bite. You guys have probably seen this before. It is to connect PEX piping to PEX piping. And what is PEX piping? This is PEX. Flexible, completely easy to work with, and very, very easy to cut. You're replacing the old copper with the PEX, and you just fit these guys right in there, and it holds it's very very easy to do you don't have to be a master plumber and sweat copper to be able to do it so some of the tools you're going to need right off the bat is you're going to have to have a pex crimp tool this is super expensive but when you put the rings over your pex pipe to clamp that connection the pex just goes right in here you're gonna to have to have these and you're gonna to have to have the clamper and I can tell you that these two are pretty expensive this is very expensive these things will run you you know almost 15 bucks a bag they're expensive um, PEX makes almost every single kind of connection you can make or shark bite does um, these are beautiful because then you're you know your regular water line your wa regular water connection can just screw right into here um, you're also going to need a lot of your PEX or shark bite uh, connectors um, th these are half inch half inch to half inch um, so we have half inch water lines throughout the Argosy you're going to need a PEX cutter this is to actually cut the PEX um, it works much like PVC pipe does and of course you're going to have to have your half inch PEX so it can get really expensive but it's it makes the job a lot easier to do so the plumbing actually came up 
in this corner right back there. And you'll also notice that is where our 30 amp breaker is. This is of course our bed that folds up and this is all gonna be storage. But the water came really, really super close to the breaker and the electricity. And I don't know about you, but I know that water and electricity don't go very well. So what I did was I moved it. As you can see, the PEX pipe comes all the way back around the Airstream. There are no connections over here by the electrical box, none whatsoever. Here is a little sneak peek of the bathroom so far. Got the copper piping and the repurposed corrugated tin in my shower. Of course, the composting toilet is here. I've got plumbing down here. And of course, the sink then comes down and then ties into the regular plumbing. So really, this is behind the shower. Um, this is the drain for the sink. The sink drain comes down and ties into the vent pipe. The vent pipe then comes down here and that dumps into the gray water tank that's below the floor. It's also the vent to go outside. So really easy to do. Um, I'm gonna show you, this is the pipe piping. These are just uh, 45 degree elbows that you buy with the PEX. It slides in here, you crimp these and it's very, very easy to do. Sometimes these can be a little tricky um, in tight places, a little tight back there, but um, so far that is how that's gonna work. So our plan for hot water is to use the Excel on-demand hot water tank. What's great about the Excel, it's been around for a long time. It is ventless and it can run on 2D batteries. So we're gonna hook up a propane tank line to it. Um, it runs on 2D batteries and um, it can it starts up on three PSI, as low as three pounds per square inch and that'll fire up. And that is going to be our hot water heater. Now, a lot of people think, well, is that gonna work in a camper trailer? Actually, Excel's been around for a long time. Um, a lot of, it's a European model. It's been in Europe for a long time. A lot of camper and mobile uh, travelers in Europe have been using it for a while. The on-demand tankless uh, hot water heaters have been in the United States I don't know, maybe like five to six years. They're relatively new still, um, but running on 2D batteries um, is gonna make it much more eco-friendlier. It's gonna save our batteries. Um, it doesn't have to run on any kind of solar or anything like that. So that's gonna be great. It takes very low voltage to get that going. So that's gonna be underneath our kitchen counter. Um, and when I have that, when it comes in, I will, um, I'll, show, I'll show you guys, do that and do a follow-up video on that. Um, we're also going to have an on-demand water heater in our van too. So it's going to work exactly the same way. Um, you can get the EcoTemp LP5 that runs on 2D batteries or the Excel that runs on 2D batteries also. One of the things we wanted to do with our Airstream project as far as the plumbing is we wanted to repurpose as much as we could. This is the old battery box. Of course, we don't need it anymore. So what we did was gonna have this uh, a little storage com uh, compartment and I repurposed the old shower from our original Airstream. And this is gonna be our outdoor shower. We're gonna hook it up somewhere. And so we'll always be able to have a shower outdoor. I'll probably have a small water hose in here, maybe some other things but definitely we're gonna use this. We're using every space that we can, um, and this is gonna be our outdoor shower. It definitely needs to be cleaned up, um, and I'm still working on it. So it's been a long day on the farm. Um, I'm going to uh, get ready and hunker down for the night. Um, one of the nice things about being on the farm is seeing all the baby goats that we have all the time. So uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, I think you can see some of them behind me. Um, so I'm going to call it a day. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching all of the Airstream Argosy renovation uh, videos. Um, there's a method to my madness. And in the uh, long run, I think it's going to pay off. Uh, so I really appreciate it. For people that are um, renovating an Airstream Argosy and have questions about plumbing, electrical, or anything else, 
never um, always feel free to you know drop me a line or ask I appreciate it if, uh, if you guys done plumbing before uh, go ahead and post in the comments does it look like I'm doing it right uh, would love to hear from you guys in the meantime thank you so much please go ahead and subscribe uh, we love our uh, our YouTube subscribers hit the bell so he's get notified when we do more videos Ariane and I actually are gonna go backpacking this weekend so can't wait to get out of here um, and uh, take a break. Anyway, good to see everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.